Um, so I got some requests about um, doing something that would be applicable for printing and um, that would be InDesign. InDesign is also good for making quick web pages, making pamphlets, making um, uh, newsletters and um, both digital and um, actual hard copies. So I thought it would be good to show you in design. Now, depending on whether or not you have that, the full creative suite, you may or may not have in design. But um, I figured uh, I could still give you an overview of it, even if you don't have it in case you run into it. Chances are, if you get any sort of a job in media, um, uh, internship, anywhere, you will be expected to use InDesign or to do some sort of task where InDesign could come in very handy. So um, with that, I will open InDesign. And when we open it up, it brings up this, you can see it's opening here, ID InDesign. Um, it opens up this screen, which gives you a number of choices for designing um, your layout, laying out a page of uh, text and images. Um, so your different options are, are like A4, letter, tabloid. Uh, as you can see right from the start, some of them are in CMYK and some are in RGB. So as we remember from the first week when we were doing color, if you see CMYK, we're talking about subtractive color, so we're talking about print. So you have A4, letter, tabloid. These are all print versions. These are different paper sizes. Or if you see RGB, you know you're designing for the screen, and sure enough, it's uh, a layout for the whether you're doing iPhone 5, 6, 6 Plus, the iPad, the Android 10-inch, Surface Pro 3, Web, web common or you can do uh, some sort of uh, custom type um, layout um, which is what we're going to do so I we select custom and then uh, there are document presets here um, it asks what your intent is print web or mobile we're going to do something for print. Number of pages, I'm going to say five. Um, and then we'll go with uh, page size, oh, uh, portfolio. Um, or this is uh, you can customize this um, so I'm gonna make this 11 uh, wide by eight and a half inches high if um, you don't have inches as an option here you can always go to your InDesign preferences and change your units and increments to inches uh, I prefer inches. And then I'm going to select the landscape orientation. Um, and um, then I can choose uh, other options here. Bleed and slug, for example, allows you to go all the way to the edge of the page or decide, you know, how far your image is going to go. But other than that, everything looks good. That's kind of what our page will look like. When we have preview clicked, we can see um, what it might look like and say OK. As you can see, the rulers here are in inches because that that's my preferred units to work with. Um, if I didn't want to see the rulers, I could go to hide rulers and make them disappear or bring them back show rulers I don't like this purple bounding box um, that they give you just to help you with your layout so I'm gonna get rid of that I'll go to view grids and guides 
it is a guide. I'm just gonna hide guides and it disappears. Now, the first thing you'll notice is uh, a standard um, Adobe looking layout here. So you have the tools palette over here and some of these tools should look familiar to you from Photoshop. Selection tool, direct selection tool. There's some other tools like the page tool, gap tool, content collector uh, that are specific to this, to InDesign. But then there's the familiar text tool or type tool rather, line tool, the pen, the pencil. There's um, a rectangle tool, scissors, um, some of the things that you're familiar with, the color tool, hand tool, and then the magnifying glass to zoom in and out. Also, you'll recognize the fill and stroke uh, areas, swatches from which we also had in um, Photoshop. Up at the top, this is the tools property bar. So you can set the properties of a particular tool up here. If you go over here to, if you go to Windows Pages, you can see, open up this um, look and see our basic layout. So it starts with page one, then two to three are facing pages, on the left and the right, four to five. Those are our five pages. So the first thing we want to do is we want to draw a rectangle. So we go to our rectangle frame tool and I want to make it exactly five inches. So I put my cursor so that right here it lines up on the two, two inches, and then like with all the Adobe products, if we hold the shift key while we click and drag, it makes a perfect square. If we're not holding the shift key, again, it can be any kind of rectangle, but if we hold that shift key, it keeps it locked to a rectangle. I want this five inches by five inches, uh, so I would go from two to six inches. That's not right, that would be only four. Two to seven, right? I was never great at math. Um, so, there we go, two to seven. And there's our five inch square. Um, all right, so then uh, we want to uh, put a photo in that square. Um, so we're going to go um, up to, you know what, let's, let's undo that. Let's make that, let's make that on page two. Let's make that on page two rather than page one. We'll go back to page one in a minute. So make our five inch five inch square. And then uh, let's put a photo in there. So um, since this portfolio is going to be about me, I want to put in that photo, that really bad selfie I made of myself. The way we do that is we go to File, Place, and then uh, you go to your place, opens up something that lets you look through your files and you find the file, the photo that you want. I've got a web version and I've got a, the high quality version. Uh, let's take the high quality photo, open it up, put it in there. And as you can see, it's the photo is much bigger than the box there. So there's different ways we can deal with the photo. And uh, if you go up here um, with that selected, you can choose fill frame proportionally, which if you click it, it 
fills it proportionally, or you can select fit content proportionally, which fits it in its aspect ratio. It fits perfectly, but it has, um, it doesn't fit perfectly on the sides because it's not a square photo. You can also fit content to frame, which is going to stretch it, or you can fit frame to the content, which is going to um, make the frame itself the size of the content. Click on that, and now the frame is the same size. The last one is center content. So if the photo was smaller than the bounding box, it would put it in the center of the bounding box. So this is just fine. I click on the selection tool and move that where I want it. Okay, so then um, let's say, let's go back to our front page and let's, let's deal, let's make our first page actually more like a cover page. So let's, let's go to the rectangle tool and change the whole color of the page. So in order to do that, we want to draw a rectangle as big as the page. All right. And once I've done that, I want to change the color. Right now, the page is, is it's white because you're seeing the color of, of the paper that this would be printed on or whatever. But the, the, the fill, this isn't filled in any color. As you can see, the stroke is just a red line through it, which uh, we know from Photoshop is empty. So if we click on or double click on that, we bring up the familiar color picker. So you remember the color, our friend, the color picker, same as in Photoshop. We can choose what color we want to make this. Now, um, ultimately, although I'm making this book, I'm going to make it for, I'm going to make it a digital book. So I'm going to deal with the RGB colors and I am going to select the red, green, and blue values and I'm going to, um, make them all the same value. Now, we didn't talk about this too much the week we were doing color, but remember R is your red, G is your green, and B is your blue. What color do you think we'll get if we make them all the same value? Let's see. Anyone who said gray is correct. Whenever you have the same value for red, green, and blue in RGB, uh, you are going to get a some shade of gray. And that shade of gray will depend on um, what numbers you put there. So I put in 50-50-50, um, which adds up to 150, and that's going to be a darker shade of gray. If I were to put in 150 in each of these. That's, remember this is additive, so if we're coming up with a higher number, that's basically 450 there, 150 of each red, green, and blue, it's going to be a lighter gray. This is a nice color there, so let's stick with that. Then, all right, so what else do we need for a cover page? We need um, my name on it. So I go to the text or type tool and I'll find a space in here, click and drag. And I'm basically dragging out a bounding box for the type. Once I've done that, I'll type in my name. And that's uh, way too small for this cover page. So I'll highlight it and I will make it a lot bigger. I go up here, 
Uh, first of all, I'm going to change the font type from Minion Pro to my favorite font. You can choose any font you want. I like Lucida Grand Bold. This is one of my favorite fonts. And then I will make it much bigger, say 24 points. And um, I will also want to change the color. Um, so, well, let's do some other things here. You can change, um, you know, your various at things like the the height and uh, the you can make it italics. Uh, you know, change the amount that it leans, the width of your things, um, your letters. I'm gonna go look at some of these options here. I can make it superscript, strike through, underline. I like the idea of all caps. I'm going to do a very big uh, all caps. Yeah, there we go. Um, and then I can also change the color. Uh, again, you have stroke and fill. And um, I'm not interested in stroke, which would be the outline of the letters. I'm interested in the fill, which is the main color of the letters. Right now they're black. When I highlight them, they look white, but they're black. So if I click on, or sorry, double click on the fill, the color picker comes up. Once again, I can choose what color I want. I want a fairly bright cyan, so I'm going to drag my color picker way up there, or I could put in the value I wanted here, say OK. And now I have my name on, um, on this front page. Um, I kind of want to make some more adjustments here, so I'm going to go back to my type tool, select the type, and I want to spread these letters out. So I'm going to use this tool right here, as you can see, the double-ended arrow, to spread them out some. And I can spread them out 5 or 10 um, apart. I would like to, I want to make it a lot. 200 isn't even enough for me. I want to go big. So I'm going to go, say, 400 here. And there we go. Nice. Um, widely spaced. I like the look of that. And then now um, I want to say Eric Chatterjee recent photos. Um, so rather than create a whole nother bounding box of text uh, over here um, and then choosing all the same information, what I can do is with the text tool here I can click I can click the, actually the selection tool and then when I'm on top of it I have this black arrow. If I hold the option key down you'll see a white arrow appears under it. That means copy. So if you hold the option key, the white arrow is there, and then click with your mouse and drag it out, you have made a copy of whatever you just did. So I'm going to take that copy and drag it up here. You will see that it automatically shows you some grid lines so you can align it with what you've already created. I'm going to drag it out to the right and choose my text tool and then change the word here from my name to recent photos and you'll see it keeps all of the same information. It's the same color and the same letter spacing and whatnot. I want to drag that. I want a little more space between these two things, so I'm going to drag that over to the right. And I kind of think these are too close to the top, so I want to select both of them and take everything down. The way I'm moving these is using the arrow keys, up, down, right, and left. So right now I'm using the down arrow key to move it down closer to the center of the page. I like it right there, so good enough. Okay, so now um, let's uh, add some photos, some teaser photos. 
uh, on the front page. So we take a rectangular frame and we draw a rectangular box. And then before I let go of the this box that I've dragged out here, before I let go, I'm going to hit that right arrow key again once. And then as you can see, it's made two bounding boxes. If I hit it again, three. If I hit it again, it'll make four even bounding boxes. I hit it a fifth time and it makes five even bounding boxes. I'm gonna drag those out. And now I have five bounding boxes underneath my name and recent photos. All right, if I take one, just like we did before, select it, go to File, Place, and I can drop a photo in there. So I'm gonna look and see what I want there. And I have this, um, I have a bunch of different options here. I'm gonna go with the uh, first photo here and say open. And there it is. It's much larger than the space. So we're going to uh, do our um, fit content. Let's go, let's center the content first. If I click on that, you can see this brown line is actually the size of the, the actual photo. So it drags way down to the next page. If I go down there and hit my shift button, I can actually drag that up and make it a lot smaller, fit it in that box there. I don't want it to fit perfectly because this obviously isn't the shape of my photo. I'm just interested in maybe teasing my photos here on this front page by showing a little bit of them in these bounding boxes without um, giving giving the whole photo in there just sort of a teaser as to what the photo might contain. So it's someone drinking wine. We'll just leave that there. And then I'll go to the next one, same thing, highlight it, go to File, Place, choose another photo. So there's my cat. Take a picture, grab my cat, do a, let's start by fitting proportionally. Uh, I don't like that. It's too small. I want it to fill the whole bounding box. So I'm going to grab a corner, grab shift, drag it out, move it in. I like the idea of seeing a lot of the cat. They'll get all the cat lovers to visit my portfolio. So I'm going to play around here and readjust so I can see more of the cat. I want to see some of the negative space around the cat, so I'm, I'll just, that's good enough. I'll click on the next one and then go again, file, place, choose another photo again I can choose different things I'm gonna fit the content to the frame don't like that let's undo that I'm going to instead drag it out 
and fit it there better. There we go. And then maybe go to the next one, file, place, choose another photo. frame proportionally and then again file place choose another photo okay so then we we got that page pretty much how we like it. Move on to the next page. So uh, now I have the, the cover page and I'm going to the next page. I've got uh, this about me here. Now I wanna put in some information about me. So I'm gonna create a, another text box here grab the text, the type tool and drag it out to fill it with text about me. And then I'm gonna go with that highlighted selection tool. I'm gonna go file, place. And then uh, I have a Word document here that's a bio about me. I'm gonna open that. And um, now it's in a font that doesn't exist here in InDesign. So I'm just gonna say, okay, close that out. What it is, is this is Greek text. Greek text is uh, basically done in the font symbol. And it's when we want to put placeholder text on a website or something that's not the final text, but it's just to show that text is going to be there. Um, for the purposes of this, um, I'm going to convert it to text that we actually know what it is. So instead, we're going to select it all and change it from symbol to um, Lucida Grand again. Instead of bold, I'll go with regular this time. There's biographical information on Eric J. Chatterjee. I think that that's redundant. We know it's a bio, so I'm just going to highlight that and delete that. Okay, so then uh, what we can do is we can we can grab this and take the whole thing and decide uh, you know black and white's kind of boring. Let's change the color. Click on the fill, double click on the fill rather. Again, I'm going to go with um, a bluish color, but I'm going to go with a darker cyan. Uh, something like that. As you can see, there it is. Um, but what happens is it cuts off. It's not everything I wanted to say. So um, as you can see that there's a little red plus, that means there's more text than there is space. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the selection tool and then if I select that by clicking on it it copies this bit of the um, bit of the the text there then if I slide the slider over and look at the next page and click on this page and drag out a bounding box and let go. It puts the rest of the text uh, onto the next page automatically. So um, there we go. Um, it did not save the, uh, the color formatting, so I have to change that again. 
but I'm going to do more than that. I don't like, I think the text is too small. I want everything bigger. So I'm going to select my text tool, highlight that, go all the way back to the beginning, highlight it all, and make it bigger. Let's go, say, 24 points. Too big. Let's say 18 points. That's not bad. Okay, so if I slide my slider over, we can see this last little bit is a different color. I'll highlight that. Go to our color picker and um, I can choose uh, the color, I can put the color back in. Um, so let's just, it's the wrong color. Um, what do we got 774500 is the cmyk for that so what we can do is just come down here and select what's wrong and change it to whatever it was 77 uh, cyan and 45 magenta and then it matches all right so that's the first couple of pages um, and then maybe uh, we want to add some more photos so um, we could put those in here um, I'm going to put in another photo uh, of mine here by selecting the rectangle tool, dragging it out, and um, putting in another photo. I don't like the shape of this box, so I'm going to drag that down. File, place, choose another photo, and there we have this old rusty motorcycle. And then um, I could continue to put more text about myself down at the bottom if I wanted to. Um, maybe I'm not happy with this page here because it's all... You know, I want a more of a magazine look for it. So what I could do is uh, select my my text here, or select the bounding box, and go to type and choose. Um, I lost it. Um, Type Text, ah, there it is. Object, it's under object, text frame options. And I can choose a fixed number of columns and switch it to say three columns. Now the text, as you can see, um, fills is in more of a magazine st column style. Um, I could add more text, another bounding box of text down here underneath the um, motorcycle 
and you know say more there if I so desired um, and then more about me in the next page or more of my photos um, but uh, I think that's good enough for now I'm gonna decide that I want to instead um, have that be the last page so I'll choose another rectangle drag it out and again open our color picker change the RGB values to 150 each to make the back page gray uh, of our book um, or our pamphlet or whatever it is our portfolio um, maybe put a photo on the back page of the or the closing um, you know back cover whatever it is final page I'm probably gonna make it digital so I don't know what you would call it but I'd still call it a back cover file place choose uh, the photo that you want I've got this nice landscape put that there and then um, voila we have our book um, it needs some page numbers so I can go to uh, this first page and draw a text box in the bottom corner and type anything I put in an F I'm gonna highlight that F uh, it doesn't matter what you type there and then I'm gonna increase the size of that say 18 points and then what I can do is go to type insert special character markers and I can put current page number and it put, puts a two there because it knows that the cover is page one and then I can just select that select it and then edit copy go to the next page edit paste there it is I can then drag that down the bottom corner wherever I want it so it's page three can go to the next page and hit edit paste and then it automatically knows that this is page four puts in a page four so there we have page four we're not going to put a number on the back cover or the front cover so now that we have our finished book we want to save it so we can go file export give it a name I'm gonna call it Eric portfolio and then I can choose what format I want I can put it in a variety of different formats including HTML or XML for the web or um, Adobe PDF um, EPUB uh, which is uh, like which is um, ebook format but I'm good with Adobe PDF print um, so that it could be printed and I say save then I have some some different choices here I can choose highest quality printing or press quality um, there's some other PDF options I'm gonna opt for smallest size because I'm just gonna this is my email version say that I'm gonna email the people I just want a small uh, size um, you can also publish to the web or other things like that um, so I'm gonna say export and it should be saved so I'm gonna open up I'm gonna go to my um, folder demo files and Eric portfolio PDF I open that and when I open when it opens up in Acrobat 
there we go. Eric Chatterjee, recent photos, talks about me, and there's my um, saved Acrobat PDF. This is great, as you can see, for creating not just a portfolio, but also, um, you know, web pages or uh, a document for a mobile um, for a mobile device or, um, you know, a quarterly report if you have to do that. Um, if you have to create a good looking quarterly report for a company or whatever the client wants, um, you can do a newsletter if, if uh, you have to do a newsletter or something like that. So I hope you have enjoyed this introduction to uh, this brief look at um, Adobe InDesign. And I encourage you to, uh, if you have it, play around with it. Uh, if you don't, it's a good tool to know because you can really quickly create web pages and newsletters. So that's all for this week. Um, I will uh, look forward to um, the next video.